Hi there, this is Mr. Tremay with Chapter 8, all about right triangles and trigonometry. And this is Chapter 8, Section 6, talking about law of signs, okay? So why the law of signs is so important? Once again, it's a way to find indirect measures, right? Ways to find me measure the distance between two objects without necessarily finding a direct measurement, such as a ruler or some type of tape measure. So previously, we learned how to solve for lengths and measures of triangles, like angles and side lengths using right triangles, but actually we can use a law of sines to solve for angles and side lengths for any triangles, okay? So what the law of sines is this. If we have some triangle, call it, name it ABC, all right? We'll say this is A, angle A, lowercase a is side A, angle B, side B, angle C, side C. Such that if I take the sine of an angle and divide it by its corresponding side length, its opposite side length, that'll be equal to the sine of another angle divided by that angle's corresponding side length. Okay? And like I said, we can use the law of sines to solve for any missing angle or side of any triangle. So let's first try this example one. We need to solve for the value of x. So the first thing what I would do is determine, okay, where is the value of x? It's right here. Now, if we know where the value of x is, we need to find its corresponding angle, which in this case is 35. So I start setting up the law of sines, right? Once again, sine of a over a equals the sine of b over b. So, the sine of angle A, which is 35, equals, sorry, over side A, which is X. And I need to set that equal to my other side and angle. So, what angle am I given? What side am I given? Well, I'm given side BC, which is 9. And its corresponding angle is 58. So therefore, I set this equal to the sine of its angle, 58, over its corresponding side length, which in this case was 9. So visually, you can kind of see here that these two ratios should be proportional, meaning that these two ratios are equal. So then just like in trig functions, how do I solve here? Well, I need to cross-multiply such that I would get 9 times the sine. Actually, we're going to say this. X times the sine of 58 equals 9 times the sine of 35. Now, how do I get X by itself? I divide both sides by the sine of 58. Because now if I look on that left-hand side, those two sine 58 should equal 1. So in other words, those just go away. So therefore, x equals, and then you just type that into your calculator, 9 times the sine of 35 divided by the sine of 58. Now, make sure you use parentheses. In the calculator, it's going to put a parenthesis after the sign. Make sure when you type 35, you close that parenthesis. Okay? Have to do the same thing for sine 58. But either way, here you should get about 6 and 1 tenth. Now, it says there, what could you, how could you find the value of B? Well, to find the value of B, which is this side length right here, we'd first need to figure out this angle. And all you'd have to do would be to do 180 minus 58 minus 35 to start. Now that's 93, 180 minus 93 is 87. So if that's 87 degrees, all you would do would use that same proportion of sine 58 over 9, except in this case the other one would be angle or side B over the sine of what we said that angle was, which in this case was 87. 
So if we're solving for b, we would just use that same proportion, but just change the, the ratio in which we're trying to solve. All right? Go ahead, pause the video, try this next one on your own. All right, so once again, you should identify what angle are we solving for, what side are we solving for. Solving for D, the corresponding angle is 59. So the sine of 59 over D equals the angle followed by its corresponding side. The sine of 37 over 98 and 4 tenths. So how do I solve here? All I got to do is cross multiply. D times the sine of 37 equals 98 and 4 tenths times the sine of 59. Now how do I get D by itself? I divide by the sine of 37 to both sides. Such that, once again, these two right here should cancel out because that divided by that is just 1. So you're left with D equals 98 and 4 tenths times the sine of 59 all over the sine of 37. You type that into the calculator. Once again, make sure you close those parentheses around that 59 and around that 37. And it should equal about 140 and 2 tenths. That should be your answer for this check here. All right, let's try this next one. Find the value of x to the nearest tenths. Same thing here. Identify first. What am I trying to solve for? x. What's this corresponding angle? 60. So let's set it up. Sine of 60 over x equals, now what are we given? Well, we're given an angle and a side. But in this case, we have to use the side length 73 because I don't have the side length for 55. And we have to use angle g now how do i find angle g all that is is 180 minus 55 minus 60 which is equal to 65 degrees now just looking at this problem i see 65 and 60 are pretty close so i should know their side measures are pretty close therefore what should be bigger side df or side gf in other words, what should be bigger, 73 or x? So I know x should be smaller and 73 should be larger because they're opposite angles because they have relationship with their opposite angles, right? 65 degrees is bigger than 60 degrees. Therefore, 73 is going to be bigger than x. So let's set up our proportion. Seven, sine of 60 over x equals the sine of 65 over 73. Cross multiply to solve here. Such that you should get x times the sine of 65 equals 73 times the sine of 60. Is x by itself? No, it is not. Therefore, to isolate it, I divide both sides by the sine of 65. Those two should cancel out here. X equals 73 times the sine of 60 divided by the sine of 65. Type in your calculator. I believe you should get roughly 69 and 8 tenths. Okay. I'm going to type that one in my calculator just to double check here. Yep. Okay. So you guys go ahead and pause the video. Try this next one on your own. All right. So now solving this next one here, I should know the answer by just looking at it. Okay, what angle are we given? 
and what side. So we're trying to solve for x. That corresponds to the 141. So therefore, if I know that this side here, I need to find this angle. So let's go ahead and find it. 180 minus 18 minus 141. Okay. We do 180 minus 141 minus 18 or eight, other way around. You'd get 21 degrees. Therefore, just using common sense, we know that D would have to be my answer, right? Because if the side opposite 21 is 13, you know the side opposite 141 has to be greater than that. So the only option would be 22 and 8 tenths. Now, if you did just solve it, right, it would be the sine of 141 over X equals sine of 21 over 13. You would cross multiply to solve. 13 and the sine of 141 equals x and the sine of 21. So you could have written those the other way as well if you'd like to. Okay, you could also have written it this way. Doesn't really matter, it's the same thing. As long as those two are equal. Therefore, to get x by itself, I would divide by the sine of 21. Therefore, x should equal 13 times the sine of 141 over the sine of 21, which is about 22 and 8 tenths. Now to get it, we're going to do one more example. I added this example here, okay, just because it is different, all right? Or what if I wanted to find a side length? Or sorry, not side length, an angle measure. So right, here's x. This is what I'm trying to solve for. Here in this case is its corresponding side. So set up that ratio to start. The sine of what angle? We don't know. So sine of x over 23. Now I set that equal to what I am given. In this case, it's sine of 82 over 27. Now, how do I solve? Cross multiply here. So the sine of x times 27 equals 23 times the sine of 82. How do you get x by itself? You divide both sides by 27 such that the sine of x equals 23 and the sine of 82 over 27. Now notice, right, if I'm trying to solve this, x is still not by itself. So we need to get rid of sine somehow. You can't just divide by sine because it's a function. So to get rid of a function, right, you got to do the inverse function. To get rid of squared, you do the square root. To get rid of sine, you do the inverse of sine. Not just to one side, but to both sides. Therefore, in your calculator, all you're going to type is this, right? These two sine functions, they're inverse of each other, so they just cancel out, so you're left with x equals, and then your calculator is going to type the sine inverse, which is second sine, 23 times the sine of 82 over 27, such that x should be about... I believe, let me double check here, 23 times sine 82 divided by 27, oops, yep, 57 and 5 tenths degrees. So in this case, we solve for x, which is degrees here. Remember to use degrees, you have to use the inverse trig functions. All right, last problem here, the exit ticket. All right, remember this is from the ACT. So go ahead and pause the video, try this on your own. All right, so notice the question here, right? What are we trying to solve for? We're trying to, which of the following expressions gives the distance in yards between green camp and blue camp? So here we go. This is the distance between green camp, green camp and blue camp. If this is X, here's its corresponding side. 
So the sine of 50 over x equals, what are, side are we given? What angle are we given? 1,000, 110, because those are corresponding to each other. So the sine of 110 over 1,000. You cross multiply here, set, such that the sine of 100, x times the sine of 110 equals 1,000 times the sine of 50. So remember, there's a sign in here, right? So we know it can't be A, we know it can't be B, and know it can't be E. And looking at this, we know it's 1,000 times sine 50, so I could stop there and say it's D. But let's just divide just to make sure. Divide both sides by the sine of 110, such that X equals 1,000 times the sine of 50 over the sine of 110. All right. That's it for Chapter 6, Law of Signs. If you guys have any questions, always feel free to reach out and email me. I'm going to do my best to answer as soon as possible. All right? Otherwise, that is Chapter 8, Section 6, talking about the Law of Signs. And this chapter is all about trigonometry and right triangles. All right? If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out. Mr. Tremaine, signing off.